What's up guys, this is Brent LeBlanc, and today we're gonna go over how to photo scan, why well, scan this like three inch little clay uh, statue that I got in Japan. Uh, as you can see here, he like is a spirit guardian for these volcanoes or something in these hot springs in Hokkaido, I have no idea. Anyway, so let's get to it. So I'm gonna show you the photographs that I took. All right, so what I did was I have this little Lazy Susan. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's just a circular thing that spins. And then I bolted this, uh, this pipe to it, and I, can, and I can stick all kinds of like small objects to it. Uh, that way that I can get um, a turn for every degree. So let's see, it looks like I did... Uh, about 30 different degrees. So I've from zero to uh, 360 all the way around. I just take one photograph and then I just spin it like that. And then I adjusted my angle. I also made the background one solid color. Um, a lot of times what you can do is you can actually walk around the object and that's how you're that you you're most of the time you're going to be doing it. You're going to be walking around the object and taking photographs of it. Uh, but in this case, I, I, once you get good at it and you can figure out what you can and can't do, you can actually rotate the object and keep the camera stationary, which is what I did here. So then I readjusted the camera, uh, to be at like kind of an upward angle that way that I could get more, uh, parallax and, uh, coverage of the statue. And the amount of photographs that I took is probably overkill. And the lighting is not ideal either. Really, what you want it you want it to be really evenly lit, and objects that are shiny are harder to scan. Still possible though. And then once you get uh, first turnarounds finished uh, for for the whole idol or object, what I did is I flip the object, starting at the bottom half of it, and. The photo scan software actually it knows that you're taking photographs in the bottom of it because it relates the pixels and it just lines them up. I don't know how it does it. It's just magical voodoo. Um, so then I just did one spin there. There's a couple different pieces of software you can use. So the one that I'm going to be using is uh, AgiSoft Photo Scan, which it has a 30 day free trial, so you can test it out. Uh, Autodesk also has one uh, called Recap. I've never used this, but there's also a free trial. And then capturing reality, I've heard good things about this one. Um, and you can also uh, try this one, I think. Uh, let's see. Try it, yeah, you can try it. <clears throat> These are all kind of expensive, um, but if you're really getting into this, you know, it, it can save you a lot of time. Uh, which is money. So, uh, so this one's ninety nine dollars for three months. Uh, recap. I think it's yeah you know, three hundred dollars a year uh, for the pro license. And AgiSoft is affordable um, if you're just doing using it for yourself. It's one hundred and seventy nine bucks, uh, but the pro license is thirty five hundred. So, yeah. Just take that in consideration when you're looking for whatever software you're going to use. Okay, so let me pull up AgiSoft. All right, so you can see here what I what I did is I I have already um, done all the steps needed. Let me just turn off these cameras. Okay, and I pull in I pulled in all of my photographs. So you do that by going to File, Import and import your cameras, which is really just your photos. Um, you'll import those cameras and then it will bring them in here. And then you'll see this little, uh, this photo menu down here. So what all this means is the green checks are photos that I'm gonna use. And if you, you see a camera you, or a photograph you don't wanna use because it has bad data or something, you can just click it and then turn that camera off. Um, but I'll, I'm just using all of mine. So the first step that you'll do is you'll have to, it's basically just a straight down. It's pretty easy actually. So you just get a workflow and then you'll click on align photos. And, and then you'll, I think that I did medium. Um, 
I mean, you, if you try these high and highest settings, it gets really, really slow. So you can just try with medium, see how it looks. And if it looks okay, then that's fine. So what I did is I actually did a medium for this one and I got a pretty good result with it. So that this, uh, all those blue slides are camera positions. So it figured out after it aligns all the photographs, it figures out where each uh, camera was. So as you were turning the camera on this first spin, and then when I was looking down at it like this, these were all those cameras like that, and then down here, and then when I turned it on its side is what all these uh, little blue cards are here. So then in the end, it gives me this little sparse cloud, uh, sparse point cloud, and I've already cleaned this one up a little bit. Whenever this, uh, after it was done creating the sparse cloud, I had the pipe sticking out of his butt and the pipe sticking out of his back. Uh, because I had, if you look at the photograph, the pipe is here and then the pipe is here. So I had to chop that off. Um, so whenever you create the sparse cloud, you just want to get rid of any data that's, uh, any erroneous data so there'll be little point clouds that are just scattered around and you want to do is just delete all those extra points that are out there that are not really helping you okay so after you've cleaned up your sparse cloud you're uh, ready to uh, make your dense cloud so make sure that it kind of looks like the object that you're taking the scan of uh, it should kind of look like it already so after you generate you'll do build dense cloud here. And I think I did medium quality for this one as well. Uh, just cause this is a, you know, small object, not really a huge deal. So, uh, and then my point cloud, after I built the dense cloud, it looked like something like this, which is just a ton of data points. And what you can do now is you can go through and you can clean up this, uh, data cloud a little bit more and get this bounding box kind of, um, you can resize it. So you kind of want it to be about the size of the point cloud so that you don't have, uh, you don't have to process more information than you need to. You actually probably want to do this on the sparse cloud portion, but yeah, just get, get it to be about the size of the object that you have. All right. So then once you have all that set up, what you want to do is uh, build your mesh. So I do, uh, arbitrary and you want to use the dense cloud as your source. And then you can select, um, how many points or how many polygons, uh, you want the object to be. So you can set your own poly count or you can just let it decide what it thinks it should be based on this dense, uh, dense cloud. And then you just hit okay. I usually don't even mess with this stuff. I, I mean, I don't know about the software too much, honestly. So, uh, you should probably go to some other sources to figure out more about what all this stuff does. Um, but pretty straightforward. You can get decent results without even really knowing what you're doing. So I just went straight down that list and then I built the mesh and this takes, this stuff takes a while. Like building that doesn't, the sparse cloud was pretty fast. It was a couple of minutes building the dense cloud. I think it took a couple of hours. Um, and then building the mesh probably takes like an hour or something. And then after that, let's go to, okay. So this is what it looks like right after you uh, build the mesh. At this point, what you can do is you can actually export your model, go to file, export, export model, and you can export uh, this model uh, however you'd like. And then you want to open up ZBrush. Okay, so now that I've got ZBrush open, uh, let me import my model. All right, so we've got the high version here. Let's import the low version. Oh, actually, let me clone that and then import the high again. All right, so now I've got the low and the high both in my scene. So I want to open up the subtool and in the uh, high version, 
let's append the low. And I want to click on the low and we want it right now. It's only at 10,000 polys. We want to divide this up to about 695. I think it's going to be exactly that. Whoops. Wrong one. Go to the low and divide this up. 695. I've already done this process, which is why they match exactly. But yours you just needs to be at least uh, the poly count of the high on this low. And what you'll do then is with both of these active, you're going to do project. To turn the distance up a little bit. And then project all. And what that did is it took all of the details on the high and it project them down onto this low version which now has uh, four steps of, of detail so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the high so we just have the low on this subtool all right so now that we just have that we can go up to the, the highest and see all the detail and go down to the lowest and we see no detail so now this has UVs and it has all that detail projected onto it. So we want to make a displacement map. So I will click. Uh, I'm just going to do three channel uh, just because uh, I had issues with it in the past. So, all right, so I'm going to, uh, let's go to texture or uh, UV. I'm going to go to 4, 4096 and then create displacement. All right, so <clears throat> what you're seeing here is uh, just the displacement map on the low. This is actually the lowest version. So you can see it made this displacement map here. Let me clone this displacement map. So what I'm going to do is let's export that. And we'll put that into texture as a tiff you can see i've already exported it here all right so now that we've got the displacement map and we've got the uvs we need to reproject uh the textures onto this new uh, idle all right so now that we're back in photoscan what we need to do is we need to import the uv low version that we made of this uh, of this little demon so i'll go to import all right, so one thing you need to consider is that what I did earlier is whenever I uh, UV this thing, I UV'd it in the place that it was exported out as, exported out at in Photoscan, because this is just an arbitrary place in space that Photoscan chose. And uh, to make sure that your model lines up, it needs to, the, the UV'd version needs to be at the origin that it was exported out as. Uh, so that whole ZBrush process that I did, uh, that was done with the low and the high at the, uh, zero, zero, zero X, Y, Z, uh, access in Maya. But originally what I did was I UV'd the version of the model that was exported in this position. So whenever you re-import it, it needs to be exactly where the old one was so that it can be at the center of this, uh, projection ring of, uh, photographs. I'm going to go up to tools, mesh, and let's take a look at the UVs that are there now. All right, so these are the UVs that I have, which are neatly laid out instead of some crazy thing that automatically does it, which you don't really want. You want usable UVs. And once you have your UV mesh here in the center of this, what you want to do is you want to build your texture. So once that's done, you're going to get a result like this. Uh, I think for mine, what I did is I actually did let an 8K map, but just for this tutorial, I did this uh, 2K one, uh, just so you can see it in action. So it took all this um, texture data from all these cameras and it reprojected onto this low mesh. So let's export texture and then just pick a location. And I saved it out as a TIFF.
All right, so then I just filled in a uh, background color here just for any bleed. And uh, so what I did is I just went in and I cleaned up uh, some of the specularity that was left over. So just did color ranges and stuff like that, like I've showed you in, in many tutorials before. Um, you just want to fix areas. One thing that I didn't really fix but needs a lot of work, and you could like fix it in Mari or in Substance Painter or something, uh, is the face came out really soft on the texture, uh, which you'll see in the render a little bit. And there's some areas in here that came out soft too. What you want to do is you want to go in and you want to paint out uh, those areas with your source material or take uh, texture photography just for the the act of fixing some of these uh, like soft or broken areas that didn't scan very well like the inside of this mouth didn't scan very well either but for these purposes it's good so one thing I want to do is I want to call out this yellow area color range and what I wanted to do there is I want to make a metalness map so that I can uh, make those yellow areas like look like gold in the render so something like that so the metalness will um, call out the areas that are in white as a gold metallic uh, so it'll call this color but it'll return a gold reflection uh, color so it'll look like metal all right so we're back over in Maya and the scene that I have set up here is I have uh, this drop cloth this HDR and this three point light setup and attached to my camera rig is let's see let me jump in here is these two shader balls one's 50% gray one is mirror and it's attached what I did is I constrained it to this uh, camera so that when I move this camera it stays there it just gives you a really good um, idea of what the reflections are and what 50% gray looks like with the lighting that you have um, so you always know you always have a reference um, for your object all right so then you just set up your camera and you set up your lights my lights are not that complicated it's just like a spotlight and two area lights you know you can just do the lighting however you like uh, so Let's actually, so I imported my low res version of the model. I'll turn on isolate select. All right, so I have the idle diffuse here, and then I did a, a color correction, and then just put that straight in the base color, and then a luminance conversion, then turn that into the spec range, put that into specular, and then I did a roughness remap, and just flipped uh, the, this luminance value and uh, mess of the levels just to get it to an area that I liked. And then for the metalness, here's the metalness map we made in Photoshop. And then I did an AI range, just adjust a little bit uh, to call out these gold areas. So what the metalness map is doing is it's looking, the, the way that Arnold does it in this uh, surface shader, is it looks at what the diffuse color is. And then anywhere where there's a value over zero, it'll start to sample that diffuse color and then use that as a reflectance value. Because normally dielectric materials, they all return a white highlight. Metal materials return a highlight uh, of the color that it is. So if uh, like a gray metal, it's gonna return a gray highlight. Or if it's a blue metal, it's gonna return a blue highlight, etc. cetera. Um, so anyway, so, and then I also have my uh, displacement that we baked out of um, ZBrush and then I just did an, uh, a range to that to clamp it a little bit so yeah all I've got is just my uh, my displacement that I used at a ZBrush and then I just modified it a little bit uh, which probably don't need to do that but whatever so uh, pretty simple so just the base color the spec and the metalness all hooked up much like we've done before you get a result like this. All right guys, that's it for this tutorial on photogrammetry. So please leave a comment below and subscribe for more similar content.